Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me this morning. We're a little bit slow getting out of the gate this morning. For those of you early birds that like to catch my, my broadcast first, uh, something happens like you wake up and all of a sudden your phone has no signal. And you think, my goodness, what's going on? And then we realize just how dependent we are on those little devices. But anyhow, with all that being said and done, we've managed to finally make our recording and sending it up to you. So God bless you this morning. We're on coffee cup number three in our countdown. And some of you may have wondered why someone who lives all of his life, first in Georgia and then the Carolinas, why does he have a Texas cup? Good story behind that. We were privileged to have a young lady spend time with us during a season of her life in Asheville named Tiffany. Tiffany, originally from Texas, was on mission in Asheville. We got to know her and become a part of her life and I had the privilege of, of course, in praying with her even after she left us and went to other parts of the country through a bout with cancer and some other things. So Tiffany, in case you're watching today, God bless you. It's amazing how something like a little coffee cup can remind you of relationships past and allow you to speak a, a continued prayer up on behalf of that person that you care about. Well, we're in 2 Corinthians chapter number one today in what looks like introductory remarks about people Paul cares about, about his travel plans, what he's been doing and not doing. And you would think, let's just jump over this and get to something that has more meat to it. But oh no, there's something very special in this passage I don't want you to miss today. Now, beginning in verse 15, he talks about this confidence, this pride he has in those converts he has, the church it's established there at Corinth, and how uh, all of this will come out, especially on the day of the Lord Jesus. And he says, because of this confidence, I plan to come to you first so that you could have a second benefit and to visit you on my way to Macedonia and then come to you again from Macedonia and be helped by you on my journey to Judea. Now, when I planned this, was I of two minds or what I planned do I plan in a purely human way so that I say yes, yes, and no, no at the same time? Well, as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. Well, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Sylvanus, Timothy, and I, did not come, uh, excuse me, did not become yes and no. On the contrary, in him it is always yes. For every one of God's promises is yes in him. Therefore, through him, we also say amen to the glory of God. Now, because there'd been some confusion in his own travel plans, Paul's trying to say, look, go with the flow, folks. God's got your best interests at heart, and sometimes you have to change things. Sometimes you have to adjust it's no big deal. It doesn't change the promises of God because his ministry is always a positive one. Now, if we're going to the part of the scripture I really want to get to this morning, I want you to listen to Paul Hamer's comments on verse 20. He said, you know, the, the apostles preached a positive gospel. Their preaching was confirmed by positive proofs, as it says in Mark 16. They emphatically declared that God was working according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ has added a yes and an amen to every promise of God. He is God's guarantee that all of God's promises are true. And God shows his faithfulness in keeping his promises to the letter. And of course, Jesus Christ is the grand affirmation to God, to all rather of God's promises. It is Jesus that shows us that God's serious when he makes a promise. He's going to fulfill it. He's going to take personal charge of those and finish them. Now, if you're wondering, you know, one of the most frustrating things in life is someone who maybe takes on a job. You hire a contractor to do some work and they get 80% of it done, maybe even 90%, but they just can't finish. Isn't that frustrating? Doesn't it just drive you crazy trying to get those last little things complete that should be done and it makes you, you know, sometimes be... Uh, in doubt about whether you should have contracted the job in the first place. God's not like that. God instead finishes his work. He's a God of the yes and amen. 
But in verse 21, he goes on to say, Now it is God who strengthens us together with you in Christ and who has anointed us. He has also put his seal on us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a down payment. Now, this is an important process to recognize. What happens when you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior? You receive his Holy Spirit. Now, what is this all about? Well, to understand it completely, this uh, Greek, Greek word that's translated sealed here conveys a twofold idea, namely to mark with a seal as a means of identification. The Holy Spirit's a mark of ownership on you, God's ownership. Now, this mark not only denoted ownership, but it also carried with it the protection of the owner. Yes, you're put under a brand new umbrella of protection, that which, which is representative of God's authority. And you walk in that day in and day out, even while you are asleep, that umbrella is still in place. It's the ownership of God over your life. And even while you sleep, the Holy Spirit does not. Now, for this definition, we can better understand the symbolic use of this term, Hamer writes, because those becoming Christians being sealed with or by the Holy Spirit, as Paul also talked about in Ephesians 1, you can remember that. However, many feel that it means more than just to provide with a mark of identification. It also includes an endowment with power from heaven as denoted by God, giving uh, his spirit to us as something that's more kin to an engagement. Now listen to what he says. You see, in modern Greek, that word is an engagement ring. Here it refers to a pledge or a partial payment that is only a small fraction of the future endowment. What is given in the partial payment is the same in kind as can be expected in the future endowment. It is not the promising of one thing and the giving of another. So did you ever think of the Holy Spirit like that in your life? Like an engagement ring. Like God coming to you and saying, this is the promise of my future commitment that's coming. It's just one small demonstration of my ultimate love for you that will be demonstrated down through all eternity. The Holy Spirit is not only a seal and a mark of my ownership in your life, but it's evidence of my future commitment to your happiness, to my love being expressed to you from now throughout all eternity. The Holy Spirit is your seal, your promise of my future protection, my future love, and my future power in your life. Well, that's something to stand on when you're in moments of weakness and you're struggling. Just remember that still small voice in you that comes from the Holy Spirit of God that entered your life the day you were born again. That Holy Spirit is just the evidence of a God that has bigger things in mind for you and for me. We can stand on his promises today. Well, thanks for joining me. We'll do this again tomorrow as we're going through 2 Corinthians, waking up in God's word each and every day. And we'll see how many coffee cups I ultimately have. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow right here.